The pigeons wake me as soon as it's light, settling on the stag, pulling seeds from his fur. At first I think they're cleaning him, but then I see they're just feeding themselves. The wind has blown away the rain clouds and dried us as we slept, hidden behind the warm back of the stag. Behind us, the whiter force tumbles down onto the rocks below as loudly as ever. Polly is still fast asleep, resting her head on her arms. The wolf cub snores loudly at our feet, occasionally making gruff squeaks and twitching like he's having a bad dream. I reach out my arm to touch Polly, but I don't. I didn't save the cat. I'm so lost in my head that the pigeons have to repeat themselves several times before I realise they're talking to me. Kester, Kester. What I say crossly. Kester, please listen. We must continue our journey with all speed. I look at them rubbing my eyes. What's the point? I can only just bring myself to say the words. We've lost Sydney. I can't look after you all. I don't know if I can save you. The pigeons look at one another and give a bird-like shrug. What is the loss of one cat compared to saving the many lives of the lost wild of the last wild? Yes, you've lost many lives and one cat. This time the white pigeon doesn't make me smile. I explode at all of them. Is that what you really think? How can you? My voice may be only just audible above the crashing of the whiter force, but in reply the pigeons flock together and launch straight up into the sky. There's no panic, just a calm power into the air, more like they're floating up through water. Just above tree height, they join up into a circle of dots far above my head. As their wingtips meet up, the circle begins to spiral slowly and they start making a noise I've never heard the pigeons make before. A long, low moan which echoes all the way along the fish road, over the roar of the whiter force, over the rattle of the wind. And then I start to hear strange, strange words I have never heard before. Words sung in a re list repeated over and over again. O oh, lapwing, kestrel, turtle dove, cuckoo, hawfinch, redpole, grebe, swift, pipit, wing chat and wood warbler. Corn bunting, curlew, harrier, redshank, ring owl, twite, willow twit, tit and wagtail. Bittern, grouse, godwit, chuff, corncrack, nightjar and skylark. Every word is a ray cutting straight through me like a laser and there is nothing I can do to stop their sadness. I put my head into my hands. Kester says the stag standing up behind me. The pigeon singing must have woken him up. I just want to get away, get away from all of them. I look down at the water in front of me and all I can see is my own stupid, angry reflection, pink and wobbling. Kester, turn around, says the stag as the pigeons continue to circle and call out above. His eyes look brighter than they did. He looks stronger, fitter than I could have imagined after all that we've been through. The birds are grieving, Kester, singing a call of mourning for those that they have lost. They call out the names of those they have lost from the skies. What about you? I remember what the pigeons told me by the first fold after their calls but I couldn't feel less like singing. He comes closer, lecturing me again. I can see so much anger in your thoughts behind your eyes. He pauses, but I don't say anything. Is there anything you would like to tell me? Stop trying to be my dad all the time because you're not. You may rest assured, Kester, that I have no wish to be your father. I beat my fists against his side. You don't understand. None of you understand. Now the pigeon's wailing is waking everyone up. The wolf cub is murmuring now, giving himself a good stretch. And Polly is wiping her eyes and staring around in a daze, sitting in a heap on the ground. The stag leans forward and I start because it looks like he's going to butt me with his horns. Instead, he leans in and muzzles my neck. He's soft and warm and it tickles. I hate him. I hate him for doing this. He tried this by the house and I'm not falling for it again. Stop it. Stop it. You just want to use me. You don't care about me. 
I do care about you, Kester. I care about you very much. What's going on? asked Polly from behind. You don't care about me. You had me flown to a place where I could have got this plague of yours. But you haven't, says the wolf cub. You forced me to help you, forced me to be some kind of hero, which I'm not. I'm just a kid who can't talk. I can't do any of this. I can't save you. I don't even save a single cat. I'm not the person you think I am. But you are, says the stag. The virus is still here and it's killed everything and there's no cure. And I don't know if Dad... I stopped mid-sentence. What did you say? I said, but you are, repeats the stag, meeting my eyes. I am what? I say back, all suspicious. Polly takes a step closer. You are a hero. You helped us escape from the Guardians. The wolf cub growls at this. You tried to rescue the cat. You protected her and the girl against the man with the fire stick. You led us free into the fish road. And you might not have saved the cat from her destiny, but you used your gift to save the life of one of your own. I do not know what it takes for a man to call another a hero, but I tell you, Kester James, by any animal measure of such things, you are just that. For a moment I stare at him, not sure I'd quite heard him right. No one had ever said anything like that to me before. And then I'm crying, like I haven't for so long. All these animals and Polly looking at me and I'm crying. Crying for Sydney, gone. I'm crying for Mum, also gone. And crying for Dad, who I haven't seen in six years. The Dad, I'm beginning to wonder if I will still recognise him. Crying just because everything is such a mess and I don't know that I'll be able to fix it. I look at the stag through my tears. I just wonder if I can do this, get us to the city. Everyone's against us, it's so far away. This virus is unstoppable. The wolf cub runs up and nearly knocks me over. Then he stands up on his hind paws and does the grossest thing. He licks me. He actually licks the tears off my face. I am the greatest hero on this adventure, the greatest hero in all the world, and nothing will ever change that. And you're still a smelly human, but that you have proven yourself the second greatest hero on this adventure. I agree with the stag. The deer grunts. You cannot save us all, Kester. You cannot save everyone and everything. He looks around the bank, sniffing the damp air almost as if Sydney might suddenly appear, but she doesn't. If you can only save some, then that is what you must do. You see, you're a hero. Now, will you stop, start acting like one? Can you lead us? We need to enter the world of man to find that help we need, and we cannot do that without you. He pauses, the first time the stag has hesitated saying anything to me, and sinks down to the ground the great stag kneeling before me. You must now lead this wild to your city. We are in your hands. Then his head lowered, he says, can you be our wilderness? Uh, uh, sorry, can you be our wildness? A wildness? The leader of a wild? What I thought the stag was. But now here he is bowing and asking me to lead them what I thought only a stag could do. I look around us. We are standing on a strip of pebbles dotted in between with shallow pools. The loosely scattered stones spread thinner and thinner over a carpet of sludge as they run down towards the water's edge. Ahead, the ground rises up steeply covered with tall reeds and I cannot see what lies beyond. Behind us, the water of the fish road, tumbling and racing and somewhere behind that, a man on crutches armed with a fire stick. I say the new words over and over to myself because if I am to lead these animals, I need to start thinking like them. The animals, insects and birds are gathered around me in a semicircle. My wild, waiting for me to lead. Yes, stag, I said, I will be your wildness. Very good, says the stag. Now tell me again everything that you have learnt about the berry eye from this she-child. As we turn again to walk back up the slope, something hits me very hard in the face. Something small and human hand shape. 
Polly handshaked. I don't care about your adventures anymore. You've lost Sydney, so you can't make him better. Her face is red and angry. I want to find my parents. I want to go home, kidnapper, now.